Thank you for attending the Cannabis Investor Webcast. We would like to thank our sponsors, uh, Pazoo Incorporated, stock symbol P-Z-O-O, MyDX Incorporated, stock symbol M-Y-D-X, CLS Holdings USA Incorporated, stock symbol C-L-S-H, American X Corporation and Technical420.com, and Naturally Spinning Enterprises Limited which is stock symbol N-S-P-D-F. We would like for you to reserve the date, May 23rd through May 25th, 2016, to attend the Cannabis Publicly Traded Companies Investor Analyst and Media Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Our next presenter today is Daniel Yazbek, founder of MyDX Incorporated. Let's get started. Thank you, everyone, for joining the presentation. Um, we're going to update you on on CD on MyDX actually now. Uh, we're going to update you on the company, uh, on the new team, and some of the latest developments that we've uh, undergone. We're also going to give a high level overview of our mission, vision, and what markets we're going after for those that are uh, new to the company. So, forward looking statements: We're a publicly traded company on the Nasdaq OTCQB. So, we have. Um, um, we are limited in what we can say, but I'm going to say as much as I can say based on all the questions uh, that are asked. Uh, we are a transparent company as long as we stay compliant. So the challenge we went after is that today there is no quick, easy, and affordable way for consumers to test the safety and composition of what they eat, drink, and inhale. So the solution we felt was uh, a company initially called CDX Inc which is a science and technology company founded in 2013, headquartered in San Diego, California. Our mission is to empower consumers to trust and verify what they put into their minds and bodies. And we've developed MyDX, which is also referred to as My Diagnostics. The X in the diagnostics industry is a very popular term. Uh, the first, it's the first handheld chemical analyzer for consumers. It offers quick, easy, and affordable way to, for consumers to test the safety and composition of what they eat, drink, and inhale. We raised $7.6 million in private equity since January of last year, and we've successfully developed and tested 220 beta units in the field in February 2015. We completed a reverse merger with Mighty X Inc. in May 2015, um, and then we uplisted to the OTQB in May 2015, and uh, we are now under the ticker symbol MYDX. Uh, the Canada DX product was released in July of 2015. We became a revenue-generating company at that point. And more recently, um, we appreciate the accolades from Mass Roots, who named us the official marijuana analyzer of the cannabis community in August of 2015. Um, and we just learned that they applied to get uplisted onto the NASDAQ, so we're very excited for Isaac and his team at Mass Roots. Um, so we offer a simple solution, and we believe we have a first mover advantage. So how does it work? For those who are not aware of the analyzer, it has a device and it connects via Bluetooth to a smartphone app, iOS and Android at this time. You place a sample of um, uh, whatever material we're testing uh, chemically in the sample chamber, and that will connect via Bluetooth, and then you push measure, you wait about three minutes, and it gives you the chemical profile of your sample, and in the case of the cannabis application, it asks you how did this make you feel. So our first mover advantage is that Midas is really the first handheld chemical analyzer for consumers to measure certain chemicals of interest in our verticals, which we'll discuss, and provides an analysis at a price point sensitivity that others can't match for our, uh, for our size. It's an affordable uh, price, which we, leave, which we are actively decreasing at this time with uh, certain product financing solutions. So if someone's paying $700, at some point in the future, we hope to offer uh, financing for this so that they're paying about $58 a month for 12 months. Uh, it's a simple three-step process, connect sample measure, it's a th approximately a three-minute test, and we're trying to decrease that. It uh, has a razor blade model, uh, which means we have recurring revenue, we have uh, sensors, and we have sample inserts, and we'll get into that. And consumers are really in increasingly uh, interested and in, in in mindful in what they put into their minds and bodies, so we're capturing this as a first mover in that market. Uh, the MyDX solution, um, uh, you know, we've got a variety of products. The analyzer, which comes with a sensor, and uh, 15 sample inserts and a free app and uh, on free cloud service uh, is a package which is $699. Uh, you can then buy additional sensors for different applications. The first application we launched is Canada X. 
the price of this is $69.95 tail. And for the inserts, we have $1.49, and if you buy in bulk, uh, they come down to $0.99. Cents. Um, the Mighty X app is free uh, for Android and iOS, and the cloud service, which is really a knowledge base of, you know, we, we can, I think, over 500 cannabis strains in San Diego and, and other labs in Arizona and, uh, and some of our partners have tested uh, uh, samples as well. And it's interesting, the data that we've been seeing for, for uh, the breakdown of THC, CBD uh, profiles, and the industry would like to, uh, obviously, THC is the topic right now. We'll get into that, but we're going we're gonna, to, I want to explain that it's not about THC, and, and some of the data we're seeing is, you know, there's a limit to what this THC profile, uh, what's the maximum number that we've seen. So it's going to be interesting how this, how, how this turns out with the data we accumulate. Okay, let's talk about the technology. So I like the technology because it was, you know, I like the field of biomimicry. Basically, you, you can mimic nature's design and engineering. You know, it's a perfect model. So there's a human sense of smell where you can smell vapors of different samples. These vapors, your mind will, you know, it's, they're going to be converted to electrical impulses, you know, in your body, and interpreted by your mind. And we, we, we did the exact same thing with Mighty X. We used a pump. And we've been, you know, this was an $8 pump we started with. We aggressively reduced the price of this pump to under $10 uh, by uh, design for manufacturing exercises we've gone through over the last uh, year or so. Uh, we use a, a, an array of sensors, and that's the key. You have many different sensors that detect the chemicals in different ways. And when you interpret the signal, uh, you're able to, you don't have to separate. You can just act, you can interpret everything at once using sophisticated algorithms. And in the area of hardware and software and algorithm engineering, that's what we've developed. This looks like an old-fashioned diagram, and we'll update this for you, but we are very advanced at this stage in each of these, each of these areas. So we're leveraging technology used for over 15 years. Um, uh, it's, uh, the space station actually used this technology to detect the air quality for astronauts. It was uh, uh, funded by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, for certain applications. Um, and uh, a sample is placed in the Mighty X device is analyzed by 16 sensors, and that's the whole point. With electronic noses, you have many sensors. So a dog's nose has more sensors than a human nose, so that uh, gives you an idea of how far we can take this technology. So there's four different applications we're going after, Organa, uh, uh, Organa, Off Arrow, and Canna. So uh, I'm just going to touch on each one. So Organa DX will like what you eat for organic properties. So we're excited to to get preliminary data on our pesticide uh, sensor and the specifications we set out. Um, we're actively seeking pesticides that are linked to cancer. This is a, an epidemic that I believe that is, that is important, and we, uh, we feel, and in the data and, and the uh, uh, World Health Organization report that we've seen, that some of these pesticides are, are linked there, and so we are active in this space. It's difficult to develop a, a technology that can simply uh, uh, detect everything, so it takes time. And uh, once you detect the pesticides, you then have to detect them in actual samples. So our process is, 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 is fast, but still requires uh, a lot of work. A booming industry, obviously, uh, organic food industry is booming. And I'm not going to get into the details. Everybody knows, uh, you know, everybody's going organic. And because we, we were starting to learn, you know, pesticides are linked to cancer. I want to know. So the next topic, uh, Aqua DX, which is the next sensor, will test what you drink for harmful chemicals. Obviously, uh, there's also pesticides in water, uh, I've recently uh, learned. So uh, they seep because you have the, uh, the farms that spray the pesticides, and the pesticides get in the water supply. And, and so we're going to be looking for a lot of chemicals uh, in water. In AeroDX, this is a simple index by the EPA. Uh, we, uh, we were working with some partners originally who, who were able to successfully do this. We'll probably incorporate their sensor or develop our own uh, to detect air quality. And that becomes an issue. But what I'm most excited about is, is Canada X. And that's the, the cannabis vertical that we went after first because, you know, this industry needed a friend in science and technology. And we, we were, I personally was excited, and, and some of my team members as well, um, about being able to find a strain that works for you. Because it's so difficult, as my colleagues uh, or my uh, fellow presenters I mentioned earlier, to get consistency in anything you do, and so there's many ways to approach it. You can extract and formulate and give someone a product. That will work. Uh, you can uh, uh, you know, do a variety of things. You can mix samples. But we want to be able to test your samples and tell you, you know, here's what I recommend for you a strain that works for you based on your own physiology. So 
The Kennedy X sensor will test cannabis 25 important chemicals of interest, including cannabinoids and terpenes. Uh, the federal government at this time is not mandated, but obviously states have mandated for testing. Uh, the chemical composition of lab mints is really consistent. I don't know if this is 100% accurate. It, they're, they're, and they did a test with Emerald Scientific, and lab variances are, you know, plus or minus 16% is what we heard. So as lab standards are articulated, we want to be a part of that process so that we uh, can, um, you know, be able to offer a solution that's complementary to labs. So because, you know, a $50,000 piece of equipment is always going to detect uh, more accurately than uh, a, a $699 device. That said, we're targeting 20% accuracy with our devices for chemicals. So the projected market forecasts are increasing. 27 medical compassionate states uh, are uh, now medically legal. Five, including D.C., uh, have adult use. And the growth is, uh, they, it grew 74% to 2.7 billion in 2014. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's a growing market, and we're excited to be here and to support it with data that we're going to be helping generate uh, and articulate uh, to the market. So this is the solution, so real-time cannabis testing in the palm of your hands. Um, you will be able to, uh, I think we've covered a lot of this, the recommendation engine we're excited about, and this is some of the terpenes that we cover, and these are some of the cannabinoids that we test as well. And CBD, our current accuracy is not very high for those that are out there, so uh, our THC is looking good, CBN is looking good. Our terpenes are more volatile to work that level. But more importantly, I want to touch on this, which is we don't believe it's about THC. So a lot of people are stuck on this, and you see this THC and CBD. We, we say it's about PCP. You can say total chemical profile, total cannabis profile. The point is cannabis contains over 400 chemicals uh, that can affect our minds and bodies. And then, these, you know, there's a lot of terpenes and cannabis and flavonoids, which we haven't even tackled yet, together with a garage effect. Uh, that ultimately dictates how it affects our, our body. So we're going to test for all of it, and we're going to interpret the, uh, the sensor responses with our algorithms to tell you we're using a reference database, which we use with GC, similar to QuantCan, similar to other folks in the industry, what we, you know, how we report this, and, and we want the patients to help us understand how does this make you feel and help themselves. And when you can save this personal profile, you can then use uh, a recommendation engine which I can touch on here. So once you've saved the harlot who helps you relieve epilepsy or makes you happy, and here's the total chemical profile, uh, then you can come back and look for something that relieves epilepsy. And you know you can actually look for multiple elements at the same time and narrow down in our app. But you can look for epilepsy and pain. And it will narrow it down so harlot who pops up actually in your data locally at a local dispensary as we tie this application in. And community, you know, what's in the reference database. And so, so this is... Um, uh, something we want to drive as a point in the industry, and we're, and we're doing that with Kennedy X. So we seek recommendations. You can get information. We're tying in. So once you identify a strain, you can locate it at a local, at a local dispensary, and, and we're working with some partners to achieve that goal. So uh, this is important because we are going to be collecting data, and uh, data from a variety of sources, manufacturers, distributors, consumers, and regulators. Manufacturers want to know what they're growing. Distributors want to know what they're buying and selling. Our, our, our focus is consumers. Uh, that's why we made it at a consumer price point, so that um, they can know what they're putting in their body, and they can test the potency and say, uh, we get them out with the organic sensor or even another form of the Canada sensor, which we're excited to announce in the near future, and find that strain that works uh, for them. So uh, and then we'll transition them into the pesticides. But we do see it span across, including regulators. You know, a consumer-grade version of this device can help mothers uh, know whether their child was, uh, you know, did they smoke? <laughs> or uh, that would be interesting, and we would support the regulators on that track. So our goal is to support the industry and, and, and the entire supply chain. And, um, and uh, we are going to be uh, secure, and we want HIP compliant, and we have taken all the steps toward those goals, and we will get the certifications and everything else required to continue to uh, exercise uh, you know, safety with data and uh, share this data with the communities that we work with so that everybody can benefit. So our business model, we, um, a lot of our sales to date have come from uh, consumers uh, via web. So we're very excited about that. It's direct retail. And it's really helping us uh, you know, have a direct relationship with the consumers. Um, at trade shows, we had a lot of interest. We haven't attended a trade show yet with, uh, with our devices. We will be in the near future. And our wholesale and channel distribution partners have uh, have begun to uh, uh, you know 
supply our devices, and we're looking forward to growing this uh, uh, portal here that of, uh, so that we can uh, deploy faster and have people play with the device in live. Our growth strategy, you know, we're, we're just kickstarting our marketing, advertising, trade shows. We recently brought on some uh, new team members we're looking forward to announce, and, uh, and we believe they're going to do a great job for this company. Uh, we're going to expand our sales team, leverage uh, channel partner sales teams as well, which is important. And, uh, you know, a company like the Cannabis Rep Network uh, that was recently launched, I think, would be very interesting, uh, and people should look them up. They give tours to dispensaries and, uh, and promote products, and I think they're going to do very well. Uh, we're going to increase our uh, pipeline and, you know, um, game POs and contracts, and this comes in as you do uh, purchase orders and invoice, you get into a cash flow, so we need to make sure that we can support our distributors so that they can sell these devices uh, depending on the size. Uh, product development, uh, Canna, uh, Organa, uh, Aeronauk will be in the future. Organa, we're excited uh, next, uh, as well as whatever we add to Canna. And then we have, uh, have had a lot of requests from custom niche markets, so we're looking forward to collaborating with people on, in, this, in various spaces on food safety, wine industry, whatever uh, comes up, as long as we stay focused. But at this time, we're focused on Canna and making sure that that solution uh, means the customer and exceeds the customer expectations. Uh, exploit uh, Canada DX database. Uh, obviously, uh, we want to be able to. Uh, uh, I see it at a CDX medical at some point in the future. Once we can identify formulations uh, from a worldwide uh, patient class, I think it's going to be exciting. This is why we want to work with the communities and look at what's fair and work with everybody to to make it um, you know comfortable for everyone in this industry. International expansion, we look forward to expanding. We recently uh, have a member of our team, uh, uh, Sean, he's in Europe, and we're excited to have him on board and to support us uh, expanding in that area. And um, so we have a lot of IP. This is important. Um, we, uh, we, uh, have a, we've created our own IP. We've leveraged existing IP from uh, Next Dimension Technologies, which is our uh, sensor developer. Uh, he's got an extensive amount of patents that he's uh, worked with Caltech to develop and license. And uh, so we are very excited. We believe this is the uh, most advanced technology for what we're trying to do at this time. We've looked at a lot of other technologies. We're excited to work with Will. We're excited to look at other areas that can complement his technology. So, so this is great, and we have an ongoing relationship. Um, we have a lot of trade secrets uh, uh, in terms of uh, our development algorithms and, and, and data and models and sensor models and interpretation models, so uh, those will remain a trade secret. So over the last three years, uh, we've achieved, uh, uh, I think two years actually, we achieved quite a bit. We, in 2013, we, it was seed funded by, uh, by my group, uh, and it was prepared, uh, we prepared the market for a crowdfunding campaign, which we uh, later launched, uh, achieved strategic partners, secured both R&D and the market. Uh, side of, in terms of development partners like Next mentioned, uh, and really looking at uh, partners like Steve Cottrell, he supported us early, and, and a lot of the folks and the early investors who later came in in Series A, we really appreciate what they've done so far. So intellectual property, we established a portfolio here. So this was our concept stage, that was our focus. So now on the stage in 2014, we developed the product. We crowdfunded it. Uh, we received our customers who came in early. And then we, uh, we did a Series A preferred class. We closed at 600000 there. We did a convertible notes uh, uh, and raised $2 million at that point. And then we developed Mighty X Canna beta product. And, uh, and then we manufactured Mighty X beta product. We did the design for manufacturing. We expanded the IP portfolio. And then we shipped 220 beta units to the field. And then we secured Series B financing. And then we developed the unit, we completed the merger, we released the product, Organa R&D, preliminary R&D was completed, company organization, uh, and we actually shipped the product here, so that's missing on this point, but we, we actually shipped our product, which was the biggest milestone, and, and obviously named by uh, Masterroots was a, was a follow-up to that. So the Mighty X Income that we're undergoing now, this was an important milestone. In, in AT15, we actually reorganized the company. We uh, we were going from an R&D company to a revenue generating company, and we uh, we had to restructure because we had to bring in teams that can help us uh, accelerate the growth as a revenue generating company. So we had to lay off some of our uh, staff, and and we became a leaner company, and we're excited to move forward with the new teams, uh, which we'll announce shortly. 
And then we have uh, Mighty X offering at this time. In 2016, we'll be focused on growth and spinning out some of the verticals. So let's meet the team. Uh, we have a, a very uh, talented team. We have a very experienced team. We have a, uh, we have a great team. And uh, at the board of directors, we have, uh, you know, at this time, six members. Uh, you know, Mike Harris, Fred Peer, George Jacoby, Ed Rothman, Dr. Stephen Katz, who's, uh, who's uh, actually recently launched the pet line, Therabus, and uh, we congratulate him on the announcement. Um, so uh, this is the current board. We have at the center of the team, uh, sitting across with me right now, is uh, Ms. Jody Dillon. She's our caller head of operations or the heart of this, uh, this company at this time because she interacts with everybody and makes sure that they're they're taken care of in, 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 in a timely fashion. So thank you, Jody. And we have Trinet, which uh, manages our human resources. Um, I want to introduce um, shortly here uh, Mr. Uh, Albert Hugo Martinez, uh, who is our uh, new CEO, effective today. So Albert is behind me, and, and I want to make the introduction. Uh, uh, let me do that. Actually, would, would you like me to make to do that now, or do you want me to go through the company first? Go through the company. And okay. Relax. There you go. We're going to introduce Albert. We're very excited to have Albert on board. He's, he's very seasoned, and he's going to help us go to the next phase of this company. So uh, let me go through the rest of the team. So I'll be focused on product. Uh, we're working with Next Dimension Technologies, Dr. William Royer. We couldn't do this without him. He's been, he's been incredible in developing this sensor and working with the various requirements and the needs of everybody. So, And he's now stepped in, and he... He works with us on a weekly basis to, to uh, work with the teams and, and get it done. AQS, contract manufacturer, they've really, really helped us, you know, over the last year develop this product, manufacture it. They have, they're in California. They have, a, you know, they can do up to 10,000 minutes a month here, and they can do up to 100,000 100, facilities in China, and we can uh, grow from there. But now that's good enough. So we're, uh, we're very happy to have them, and, and, and their patience and support in working with us uh, has been appreciated. So on, um, uh, so we'll develop sensors, and he works with Travis, and they, de you know, will develop test these sensors in our lab here in San Diego, and and he'll come in and, and, and test them. We work with SC Farm Labs as well to test them on a GC, so we can cross reference our our, our uh, data with them. We have electrical engineers, uh, industrial mechanical engineering teams. Robert Rodriguez, an electrical engineer, incredible. Uh, he did a great job on the board. Industrial and mechanical, Yuval and John, you know, and some of the other mechanical teams like Fathom have really helped us, and uh, so we're grateful for all those teams, including AQS, AQS's teams. Now, Rob Beagle, uh, he's, our, he's our heart and soul of our software. He deals with apps, uh, data, algorithms, and, and very, very uh, visionary, I think, sharp, and is now working with our uh, development partners in, in across the world, including India, uh, to... Uh, you know, man execute uh, at the speed that we'd like to move uh, moving forward. So uh, let's go to sales and marketing. So this is product, and we have other teams, and we can get into. And everybody's got a great bio. You can, um, um, you know, we'll actually put all these bios on our website at some point. We should do that, Jody. And then, uh, um, so Dave Bortolin is our heart soul of revenue, and he's managing the market. And he's recently been joined by. Uh, a wonderful gentleman. I don't know if you wanted to make the announcement just yet, so we didn't do an official release map, but you're on the sheet here. So he's uh, recently joined as our uh, executive president of sales and marketing, and Matt uh, um, will give you his background later. I'm going to leave that off the list for now. Sean, uh, Nick, uh, and uh, Nick Nudge is our social media. Uh, he's uh, so anybody who responds, if he doesn't get back to you within say, 24 hours, just let us know. We'll make sure that he that he does a great job, Nick. Thank you so much for everything. And Sean in Europe as well. Very, uh, you know, I'm excited because Sean is, is, is an incredible guy and he's going to do a lot of good things for us over there and just a nice guy all around. And um, we have a lot of distribution channel partners that Dave is working with and he'll be announcing some of those in the upcoming month. Um, and uh, Garrett and customer service has been holding down the fort whenever somebody can't connect to the app, when their Android device doesn't work because it has a certain version, we are there to try to troubleshoot it. And if we can't, we'll give you a timeline where we can fix it. So that's on that front. Our legal team, uh, Wilson Sincini supported us in Series A, Series B, Overman Law, Intellectual Property, helped us with our IP. Steve Davis, our legal counsel, you know, he's, he really is there. He's so responsive, incredible person to work with. If you need anything on that front, Dave, Steve is your man. 
and Greenbridge Council, uh, Kershey, you know, in the, anything legal we needed on that front. He's been very helpful and, and uh, really helped us move forward in the early phases as well. And NACO does all of our stock. So we've got a great team. And I want to uh, introduce uh, Albert. I'm just going to go a quick background just to uh, Albert. Is, uh, is famous in San Diego, actually. He's, he's, he's done a, a number of sizable exits for a variety of companies. He recently raised a lot of money for uh, companies like iBoss and, and other. And, and, other, and I, wanna, I, would, I don't want to take away the thunder, but I do want to mention one thing, which is Albert at one point, uh, he, he was on the board of directors of, of um, uh, Microsoft and in our book. Uh, on our digital board, uh, use uh, a processor, a microchip, and you know they've got a long lead time. Maybe I think that's the longest lead time supply chain. So Albert has been 24 years on that board, and we look forward to him uh, helping us. It's just ironic that they use that chip, but uh, but I want to, without further ado, Albert, uh, uh, Mr. Albert Hugo Martinez. Uh, Thank you, Daniel. Um, I'm joining this company, and I tell you how pleased and excited I am. I have full intentions of assisting Daniel in making his vision a reality. Um, I think we'll do a lot of good for mankind, and ultimately the intent is to help people, and that's, uh, that's why I'm here. So with that in mind, my background is such that I started out as a technician with Motorola. Uh, I left them after 14 years, became the COO of a company called Burr Brown Research Corporation, uh, took them public, opened plants in Scotland, opened plants in Japan. I'm just going to hit a few highlights. Uh, I then uh, became the CEO, uh, CEO of AMCC, Applied Microcircuits Corporation, and then, after, then I retired after I went public. I then became the CEO of a public company called GGTI, came out of retirement. I had 8,000 employees in mainland China, 3,000 in the Philippines, 2,000 in the U.S. I sold that to Pulse Electronics. As a chairman, I sold Reaction Design, which is a private company, to ANSYS. And again, as chairman, I sold uh, Ramtron to Cypress Electronics. Um, I'm really excited about being here. I go opened several plants, as I indicated before, but I've been involved with everything from semiconductors to manufacturing companies to software companies. And I've never dealt with this particular segment, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. And Albert brings a, a team with him. Uh, so he has, um, you know, we understand we're publicly traded, and we, uh, we need to work on making sure that the investor world is aware of our activities. Uh, so. Uh, you know, we've got a variety of public market consultants that Albert will be working with. Paulson Investment Bank, I didn't thank them. Thank you, Billy. And thank you, everybody, for and Lorraine and everybody at Paulson for, for helping us raise the money that we did early on. And, uh, and the entire shareholders that we have right now, thank you. Because, honestly, we, you know, it's funny. You, we, you, you, things cost more money sometimes than you think. And we, uh, we, we built a, a lot of great things. But... It's, uh, it, you always need money to keep going, and that's the whole point. Uh, so this is an active role. Albert's coming in to manage that piece and make sure that we're uh, successful at every phase of our development as we scale globally, and, uh, and that means that position is so critical uh, to our success, and we're excited to have Albert here to, to support that. Um, and uh, let's continue. So we, are, we, are, we do have a $2 million round that we recently launched a few days ago. Uh, MyDS is now a revenue generating company, and as a result, we're focused on the focus area I mentioned over here, which is manufacturing supply chain, sales and marketing, distribution channels, complete next generation sensors, uh, Organa or Acana Plus. So this is our focus right now. We want to recruit new talent. We've already done that, and we're doing that. We need to make sure we grow in the right directions, increase inventory, and support the economies of scale. We've got to be able to support the POs and, and the orders of 5,000 units or 10,000 units a month, which you have to prepay materials for, you know, all that uh, costs money. We need to expand our marketing, sales and distribution efforts uh, in this space. And marketing is very important. If you haven't seen a lot of marketing from us yet, you know, we, we'd like to really expand on that. And we've got a great team that is going to really kill it in that space. So we're very excited to have them. And we want to expand our investor relations activities. Uh, and Albert's going to support us on that front coming in and making sure we move forward as well as internally in the company and establishing culture. So we're looking forward to, to having him uh, uh, support that process and accelerate organic and Canada Plus development. So this is where we are. And our key takeaway is we do have a first mover advantage in creating a handheld portable chemical analyzer. Um, uh, we 
We provide chemical analysis at a price that retailers can't match. We have patented technology, uh, which is a sustainable and, uh, and, and will give us a competitive edge. And we're aggressively pursuing uh, organic food and cannabis market at this time. Um, and uh, the data coming back is going to be very, very uh, unique as an asset. We look forward to working with partners and, and governments and industries to, to uh, you know, make that acceptable and monetize it in, in some cases. Experience management team and really, I, there's a line that I mean, Albert, we're brainstorming the other day, you know, help, help us legalize the industry, help us legalize, uh, with data. It's important, you know, we, with data, when you can capture people's ailments, and say that this person felt this way. It's all anecdotal today, but if people can rec record this information in a in a in a place where everybody can have access to, we can know what all the strains are that that had this chemical composition, not just based on their name, you know, or that uh, and how it made them feel. So this is where we are. And if you have any questions, uh, I encourage you to go to our website. Uh, where my mouse is here, but uh, we uh, we have a lot of resources on our website that you can. I do want to take on our website very quickly. There's a lot of resources. You can even use our app on our site. Uh, you can learn more technology by clicking on the visit in our apps. Uh, investors can go to our website. We've got a great uh, service uh, that we use that really covers everything. We do owe you a PowerPoint on here, which we'll get to in it. Uh, and uh, so you can go through all of our recent press releases uh, and order our calendars. Company information will give you more information about the management team as we build in. Uh, myself, uh, this time Dave Bortolin and uh, Albert Hugo Martinez, some more goes on, on, on them as well, as well as our board of directors, our contact are all here. Uh, there's FAQs, financial information. You can go in and look at our latest Q profiles. Uh, stock data will give you a lot of information on, um, on our stock and historicals and where it's at. See, not, uh, and uh, let me see here. SEC filings. You see all of our SEC filings. We have filed an S1 uh, on July 20th, and uh, so that's in process for shareholders that are curious on that process. You can always call NACO, which is our transfer agent. They can compliantly give you whatever information you need. Their information is on our site, as we saw under contact. Um, and uh, otherwise, feel free to email Jody, and she will connect with me and Albert, and we'll help you do it. And uh, but the, all of our forms are on here. For governance, it goes to our board of directors, you know, Dr. Gap, uh, Offman, and you'll go through their bios, uh, accomplished with folks, and, uh, and, they, and then we talk about our committees in terms of our governance committee, ethics committee, audit committee. So a lot of this is here. Our press releases, videos, press kits, whatever you need is here. And of course, you can buy our the analyzer from our website by going to our uh, shopping cart. Okay, so uh, maybe you want to start taking some questions. One thing to note on our uh, frequently asked questions, do visit this portion of our site, of our quick start site here and some of our videos, but this has a lot of information, including what is the accuracy. I'm sure some people ask and we'll look at some of that data, but you know, it's got, it's got a wealth of resources here that really go into uh, you know, a variety of things. Okay, Darwin, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you and, and know uh, what questions we have. Your analyzer is six ninety nine, sensors is sixty nine ninety five, sensor inserts is a dollar forty nine. Uh, so do they need I guess the question is do they need all of this to get started with the analyzer? So do they need they need the sensors and the sensor insert? Uh, with six ninety nine you get you get you get everything that we discussed there. Let me see here. we should up this so this is, uh, you get the following. So your MyDex analyzer comes with a, a analyzer, quick start guide, the sensor. We're actually putting in 15 disposable inserts. Uh, we want more data. And power supply with cord and micro USB cable. So, so this is what you get. So you get an initial sensor. Now, in the future, uh, we have a sensor we can buy, uh, which is another uh, order item here. But people are confused, so we remove so. Well, for now, you do this. That's all you need, and um, and then as soon as you need a new sensor, you can purchase that for sixty nine ninety nine. But right now, nobody needs a new sensor because we the sensors are good for at least six months, and we just started shipping. So everybody should be okay for now, and then in the next uh, iteration of the sensor, we'll be able to uh, sell more sensors. Okay, and, and the second part of this question: Do you feel? Uh, the six ninety nine is of attractive price point, and how did you come to that price point? And 
this, what are the margins on that that analyzer? So good question. So you know, we launched an Indiegogo campaign, and we wanted this to be at four ninety nine, five hundred dollars. That was the price point I really wanted because you know it's cheap enough. But obviously, there's nothing like this. We then started working with distribution channel partners, and they felt that we could go higher on the price point, and then we we had to cover their margins so we can get into stores. So that price started creeping up, and then we ended up at the six ninety nine price. Now to support this price, we're offering product financing in the future as we uh, nothing guaranteed, but at this time we are actively working towards that goal so that we can get the price point down to closer to PA dollars a month for certain consumers and, and we look forward to uh, keeping you updated on that process. Okay. Uh, next question. And I think you answered this question in one of your slides. I don't know if they missed it. Is there a patent on the technology? Is it proprietary? Absolutely, yes. And uh, I've covered that. So we have patents in-house and we also have uh, patents that uh, that are licensed. So depending on the patents you're looking at, we've got a variety of patents. Uh, over 30 licensed international and new patents we, uh, that we have. So we're, we're very good on that front, I believe, uh, based on what we've done to protect ourselves both on our level or licensed IP or trade secrets, which I think are going to become fundamental. You know, the sensor is not easy to develop. You've got to formulate certain chemicals, put them on there in a specific way, and that trade secret is, is is incredibly valuable. So as much as as much as you have an IP, you know we're not you know, we're not stopping there. You know we need to we need to you know protect ourselves in, in many ways, including economies of scale. It drove the price down of this analyzer. It's all the original versions, and we decreased the price from a pump from eighty to to less than ten dollars. And we're very excited. So this is the kind of things we're doing to continue to drive this down. And I do believe in the future we're going to drive down these pricing. Uh, but we've got to support the channels. We've got to be able to work on the cross, across the supply chain. So this is how we arrived at that price point and the IP. Go ahead. Next question. Your burn rate is very low. How are you paying employees and executives? How do you know our rate is my answer. <laughs> What's that? Ask, ask that again. Ask, ask him how he knows our rate. <laughs> well, I think they're referring to your expenses are very low. So are yeah. your executive employees getting paid in stock? Well, no, no. I mean, so <laughs> it's a funny question, but yes, yeah, some of them get paid in stock. You know, we've had some recent folks approach us, and uh, you know, they want to look. We're going to become a profitable company, so we're going to be as economical as possible. That's one of the reasons we did this reorganization, so we can get this thing done on a lean fashion, so we can grow you know, and make a profit as soon as possible because we're going to be judged by our numbers. You know, the, I guess the honeymoon of development is over. It's time to, it's time to do the uh, sales and revenues and make some real money here. So the investors have supported us to date, but it's time for us to now make money. Now, we're always going to need more investor capital so we can grow. That's how it works. You know, the more money you have, the more you can do, the more you can profit. You know, we're now profitable. We're very excited. But we, we provide our, our employees, I believe everybody's happy at this time. I'm just, Jody here, you want to look at this chart? Is anybody unhappy on this chart? No, well everybody's happy at this time and we continue, we will uh, continue to support them as we make more money and raise more money so everybody's even happier. But we've got to stay lean and that's become a culture in this company. Yeah, and, and I, I'm looking, uh, I went to your income statements end of January, well, the quarter end of January, you, you only had 28,000 SG&A. On, on our queue, it shows general administrative 1.238 million ending June 30th. So I'm just curious where your number is. Did you say, uh, what did you say, 28,000? Yes, I mean, that was for, well, no, uh, November, December, and January for three months. Oh, that's January. last year. Last year. Yes. Yes. Yeah, maybe that's correct. Okay, here you go. It's 103,000 here. Ending June 30th, um, but uh, that's probably correct. That's last. That's that's end of last year. That's before we raised. That's that's probably correct. Because we that's before okay. we raised money. I thought you meant the last few months. I didn't say December, November. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's as far as Yahoo Finance goes up to. Uh, they don't. I guess it's not updated. Last year, that's probably correct. We didn't have a lot of overhead at that time. We hired a lot of the folks after we closed our Series B. 
and uh, you know, and now we've since restructured and reduced our run again. Okay. Uh, next question: Don't the don't the, don't, the, don't the sellers or the dispensaries provide CBD and THC levels? Don't the sellers? Uh, go ahead. Finish the question. Yeah, don't the sellers and the dispensaries? I guess they're talking about the dispensaries provide CBD and THC levels. Do they Some not them do. Some of them do. Uh, I don't. I can't tell you exactly which one. You know, certain uh, uh, maps might be able to tell you that, or you know, other companies. But um, we. The, yes, the answer is yes. Some do. Okay. You want me to comment? I, I wanted you to comment. I guess uh, if if the dispensaries provide that data, uh, does that make your analyzer? Uh, do they need that analyzer if if the dispensaries provide that data, or is it just some of them? Might. Depends. You know. Uh, look. Uh, so the the process the dispensary has to go through, assuming they actually send the the samples for testing, so they're actually um, at some point where we're using labels, you know, and and uh, you know sometimes just putting the numbers on, you know, to high levels of THC because maybe that's what matters. So this, the, the, yeah. excuse me, this will provide the dispensary the opportunity to determine whether or not he can validate what his information he's getting from another source. Uh, next question: uh, Would would this analyzer have any? Uh, would would consumers would it have any other uh, entity or person that could buy the analyzer uh, other than consumers? Have you identified any other uh, entity who could actually use that analyzer besides consumers? Yes. You got to define consumers, okay? Because let's say a gore has it. Do you consider him a consumer? What's that again? Yeah. Sorry. Three. Dispensary. Are they a consumer? I don't believe so. The end result is the person who actually eats or smokes. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Let me just let me just go. So we have so remember we got manufacturers like the growers, I mean distributors. Right. So dispensaries might want to sell. Not everybody, you know. Look, this is legal in only some states. Uh, you've got a global market which doesn't have access to testing. Assuming they know, we, we're lucky here in the U.S. and we have access to testing. Why start? I have to drive to L.A., go to the workshop, and give just samples and and get to that. You know, um, that's and and so so it wasn't you need a practical solution that's affordable so that the industry can uh, can leverage can leverage it and establish consistency of, of testing. As long as everybody can have it, then then uh, can trust and verify they're buying and selling and putting your body in potentially regulation. I think the primary key here is the fact that you get instant verification. Yeah. Okay, you're not sending it up to the lab, you're not relying on anybody, you clean your hands and yourself. Okay. Uh, next question: When do you anticipate revenues? We are, we already oh, go ahead. Though. We already are receiving revenue. We had shipping uh, last jump. July. In fact, if anything, right now we we would like to have a larger inventory so that we can take care of side. Okay. And who are your competitors? Do you have any competitors? So in the handheld chemical analysis space, no, uh, nothing that can do what we do. Um, you know, you have some, some, uh, some. Uh, so I look at it as not necessarily competitors, but in the portable space, you've got um, even Quanican or even Sage. You know, they do a, a kind of a tester that, but that's twenty thousand plus uh, on average. And I know both teams, and I think they have. Uh, you know, good products. They look at THC, CBD, and CBN. We look at terpenes, so as well as THC, CBD, and CBN. They might have a little better accuracy on the cannabinoids, but we'll have uh, the terpenes, and we have a total canna profile and a fingerprint across these sensors that we're manufacturing at scale. 
So, uh, so we have uh, on the GC side. I don't think you can necessarily compare us to a lab, um, but uh, but uh, uh, the uh, so so at this time we uh, we believe we don't really have any competitors at our price point. That's the point of the takeaway. So at our price point, I wouldn't consider us having any competitors at this time that that are going to do what we do. And we're continuing to a lower cost version. So okay. recognize that we're not stopping here. We we recognize that the lower the cost, the higher the probability of having a larger customer base. And this next question is sort of related to that. The companies that make the breath analyzers, uh, will they have any hurdles to uh, crossing over into the cannabis space? So that's interesting because we, uh, so the companies that make the breath analyzers is crossing over. So we just so there are some companies that have this. We've been actually, uh, you know, we're very, we're, we're familiar with them, and we are uh, talking with some of them. Uh, but uh, look, between the IT, the commercialization of where we are in the process, and what we've been able to do, I think we're we def we're the first mover in this market, and uh, we have a footprint in this market. We will have a bigger footprint in this market, and uh, whoever wants to uh, apply certain technologies, if they're using an electronic nose, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to compete at this level. But we'll see, you know. Uh, the market's open. That's why it's a market, and we're going to continue to build our applications and our sensors, and and uh, as the first mover in this market. And let's face it, we see more active uh, competitors. Uh, we'll know that we picked the right marketplace. And if we don't see any competitors, then we're obviously not in a place where we should be. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, that concludes our Q and A. Uh, any last comments on my D DX Incorporated? From us, Derwin, or from uh, your end? Yeah. Any, any last comments? No. We thank you for your for the invitation and, and your time, and we look forward uh, to the future. Yes. And uh, we're hoping, why? We're and, and, why the and, and, and why should investors? Uh, just closing comments. Why should investors take a look at investing in in my DX? Well, I, at this point in time, since I just became the CEO, I would suggest that uh, they look at my background, uh, my experience with all of the VCs I've worked with in the past is they look at the management team first, and then they go there and determine whether or not it's going to be a winner. I didn't, uh, I didn't come out of my retirement to uh, just fiddle my thumbs here. We're going we're gonna to make this work. <laughs> I, I like that response. <laughs> Well, that, that concludes our Q&A. Uh, we really appreciate you guys coming on to present. Hopefully you can give us an update maybe every, every three months or every quarter. Uh, but we really appreciate your presentation. Our next presentation is at the top of the hour, technical420.com. Thank you, MyDX, uh, for presenting. Thank, Thank you. you.